What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. I hope everybody had a great day. All right, guys, my apologies for not making any videos lately. I've been really busy at work, you know, getting closer to the holidays, so on and so forth. But we're going to still be knocking them out for you. All right, because there's a couple things I want to cover, and then we're going to get right to possible anomalies and the newest insight photos. All right, so the first thing I want to do is reiterate about the video I did about the water or the puddle. Uh, next to the Curiosity rover. Now, I did say it's either water or maybe just perhaps a hole in the ground, right? Now, many of you guys are on board with it. And, of course, some of you guys said, no, I think it's a hole. Some of you guys think it says water. And I do believe it actually has and actually has like a reflection. And some of you guys caught on because you saw like what looks like an overhang of rock. And it looked like it was reflecting in the actual water. But for some reason, some people had a problem with it. Now, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just talking about some of these other people that come along and said there's no way that due to the Mars as an atmosphere, uh, it would simply go into sublimation, which is basically goes from a solid form to a gaseous form without going into the liquid step, which is basically solid, liquid, and then gas form. That's not entirely true. And, I, you know, I got mad at a couple of these people, and I said, listen, do your own research, and you'll find out what I'm saying is true. So I just want to, you know, if anybody may be on the fence or just simple education, uh, just to check this out, let's go into that. Water could stay liquid on Mars. And I'm just going to jump into this because this is what they did. They had it in a laboratory. Let me read that. In the lab, using a planetary environmental chamber, a tank that mimics the atmosphere, temperature, and pressure of other planets, the team exposed various concentrations of briny water to conditions that, uh, that match Mars's colder, less pressurized environment. Now, that was my biggest mistake, so my bad on that. I never said whether that was fresh water in that hole, if it is in fact water, or briny, which is highly salted uh, salted content in the water, right? Okay. Based on these experiments, salty water, it seems, can exist as liquid on Mars. It was thought that any liquid on the surface would evaporate almost immediately. If you expose these brine solutions to cold temperatures, they can exist for a very long period of time. While pure water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, water mixed with sodium chlorate and calcium chloride salt, the two salts used in these experiments remains liquid down to, to negative 21 and negative 50 degrees Celsius, respectively. Now, that's pure water. Now, if we go to briny water or salty water, because salty water can exist as liquid at colder temperatures than pure water, it won't make the jump from ice to vapor as quickly, giving it a better chance of existing as liquid on the surface or just below it. Average Martian temperatures range between negative 125 degrees and 28 degrees Celsius which in Fahrenheit is a negative 193 degrees up to 28 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, uh, at various latitudes at different times during the day. And the salty test sample stayed liquid within the range. Check that out. I don't believe the 193 degrees is probably where the equator is. I believe the equatorial region would be much warmer as opposed to going more, more uh, north or more, more south, right? Uh, just like here on Earth, it's probably the warmest area you can get. Um, so I'm going to give you guys this page or the link to it so you guys can read on a little bit more. Uh, it, in fact, can actually, you know, stay as water. You know what I mean? As long as it's highly salted, it can. So, again, that was my bad. Uh, you know, I didn't say whether it be briny or, you know, uh, fresh water. But to me, if people had done their research, they wouldn't be questioning this. But anyway, I didn't lose any sleep over it. I just figured there'd be a little information you guys would want to hear and I wanted to share it with you guys. And, of course, you can read the whole page. I'll give you a link to it. All right. So no doubt you guys heard about the Insight Lander which is right here. Um, and, of course, it's, it tells you all of the instruments on here. You've got the HP-3 instrument, which is basically, it's, it's, it's going to hammer this probe, this heat flow probe, down into the ground about approximately, I think it's 16 feet, 5 meters deep. So what it's going to do is it's going to measure the internal temperature just below the Martian surface, right? Um, and to me, listen, here on Earth, I don't care how cold it gets. If you go down to approximately 15, 16 feet, what does it do? It stays a constant of around 55 degrees. So it doesn't matter how cold it gets over the ground, right? And this is the reason why they're looking into this. All right, so let's move on. Now, no doubt you guys have probably seen the video or the live broadcast of the uh, InSight lander's landing. Um, if you haven't, you can watch it here on YouTube, right? I watched it, and I thought it was pretty bizarre. Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's jump into this. Joy as NASA probe touches down on Mars. Now, this is just, I'm not going to run the video because it's basically copied, right? Right? Um, right here at 1 minute and 30 seconds, and I will give you the link, as always, to this video, and you guys can check it out. You can see right here in the background, I'm seeing blue sky here, guys. I'm seeing blue sky. And you can see the tan ground, right? 
Not eight seconds later, go up to 138, and what do we have? What? Which one is it, man? And here's the thing. They're running what they call a color wheel on these cameras, right? Let me show you what that is. You can see a standard camera here on your right, and, of course, you've got the Curiosity mask cam uh, right here on your right as well. And you can see they both have their RGB filtering, both of them, of course, you can see the CCD, the way it's designed. Difference is, you look at over here on Earth, there's no filtering. There's no color wheel, no nothing. Over here, you can see they got a color wheel, and they're running in red or close to the infrared spectrum. The question would be, why would you run infrared unless you are actually looking for heat signatures, right? It always puzzles a lot of people. Why do they keep running this freaking red filter? And I, the frustration is like, is like unreal. Just show the real photo, man. No filtering, no nothing, and I think that's what we've seen right here. Right here at one, um, 1 minute and 30 seconds, you can see that, and we'll just go ahead and enlarge it. And you can see it right here. It's blue sky, and I'm seeing tan ground. All like a brown dirt, right? And like I said, not eight seconds later, they're showing it as why. What's the point? What's the point? Just show the actual photo. To me, that's, that's my biggest frustration. Trust me, they've got better cameras than they're showing the public. I don't care if it's a one meg. You remember back in the day when we had dial-up? I mean, you could have an extraordinary nice color, but it would take its sweet time loading. That doesn't mean they can't get, you know, sweet photos from this, the Curiosity rover to the Insight, any of these uh, rovers or these orbiters, right? For, like I said, we've got this right here, and it's non-filter, and then we get the filtering wheel. Now, I understand the infrared part of it. You're trying to do it, but then go back to non-filtering so we can see the actual colors of the background, foreground. We can actually see good detail, but no. There's a reason why they keep this filter on, and it's to disguise or hide anything that might have a different color and something that may stand out. That's my only problem with NASA. Like I said, I love everything about NASA. Like I said, anything that's got to do with space exploration, uh, looking out and beyond the stars, um, you know, so on and so forth. It's the lies I don't like. It's what they're telling the public I don't like. And I'm sure you guys share my frustration, right? All right, so, so let me jump into this. At this point, we have one of 29, there's actually 29 images they've taken so far. This is what I couldn't understand either. When you've got this photo here, why didn't they just land the craft, right? Open up this this uh, camera lens protector. Why? I think there's something there that they didn't want us to see. And we're going to get into that. So let me jump back out of that photo and go back into this one here I want you guys to see. You know, I'm seeing this, and this, again, to me, this is a false color. Even if they're using a slightly reddish uh, filter it still mask everything and puts everything in the same color I don't believe that it is and again they've landed in Elysium Planitia this is the area that you know it's supposed to be mostly flat so they can actually deploy the instruments and have a safe place for the for the lander and again they've taken the depth out of these photos and right over in this area I'm going to show you some depth into this thing and I'm going to tell you what to me it looks like the same thing we're seeing on the Curiosity rover and the Opportunity rover right Right off the bat, I don't know if you guys seen this. I'd look for details, 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 right? Right here, it looks like some kind of weird square. Now, you may not see that right away, but you will. Right here, I'm going to go ahead and make a line here. Right here, a straight piece right here. That's not exactly straight, but you get the idea. But what you'll notice is this piece here, and there's plenty of other little pieces laying here on the ground. And it looks like there's something actually sticking out of this thing. Like this is black inside here, and there's something else there. You can actually see where they've actually blocked this out and made blocky areas to block out what's in here. Let's get into this. So this is a little bit better. You can see that I'm gonna back up a little bit. This is a more natural photo. As you can see, you can see the lander parts. This is supposed to be gray right here, right? Not red. That's not the way this color is. Just look it up, just Google lander the actual InSight lander, right? And you'll see these are actually gray and not this reddish color. That's telling me they're throwing a red filter over the whole photo. So if it's changing the color of the lander, what's that tell you? It's not the color of Mars. It's not. Here's the actual colors of the lander. And you can see, yeah, it's got some browns and a little bit reddish, you know, but that's not, it's not like that, right? All right. Here's what I've seen right here, okay? Look at all the parts laying here. Let's concentrate on this piece right here. These two pieces. Now, I want you guys to see the original, and I want you to see the faded lines that are doing this. Okay? There are actually a faded lines doing this here. The black circle. And you've got this piece right here. Now, let me show you that real quick. 
again right here you can see the two of them right there and I can see that pretty darn good right there now I think they blocked out a lot of this and that's the problem right so here it is I'm going to jockey back and forth on these and you can see it pretty darn clear you got this object right here I'm not sure what to make of that it looks like it's got this diamond shaped piece right there and it's got a either a black circle kind of goes down like this here it's got this triangular shape at the top and when you back out what do you have you get this other piece coming down and I'm going to go up real close for you guys right here you can see the curvature of that right there but then this very very faint line going just like this it's kind of like actually cones in like this but you can see that see that right there and I think it's actually being shadowed there's something over that but you can see it right there it's there just like as it this, this square is here and it looks like this pole or something sticking out of this thing yeah what could it be I believe there's actually parts in this thing I believe we're looking at again parts of a civilization and again this is only my opinion nobody again has to agree with it all I do is brought up the lines that are in this photo and you can see just concentrate on anything just look at anything in this photo right here and then when I go back to the original concentrate on those lines they're very faint but they're there and you can see it all I do is bring it out bring it back out and you can see it looks like a debris field I mean you can see this things back here and you can see what I've, I don't know what this is right here I'm not sure what to make of this area right here and it goes out like this comes back and goes back in see that clearly it's there in the original you can see it right there going just like this and another straight line coming down what is that any ideas what that might be okay but to me guys this uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again these things are there for a reason so I don't know if you guys have uh, been following on Facebook if I don't know if you guys are part of any of these uh, Martian groups quite a bit of them out there and they mentioned this gentleman's name his name was uh, Jean Ward I believe it is and what he was showing was different areas like satellite photos of the Martian surface and guess what he did one of Elysium Polynesia which is where this actual lander is let me show you that now I'm not gonna run the video but this is his Jean Ward right here and you can see this is relatively new November 8 2018 the Mars insight lander is scheduled to land in the tw on Mars 26 which it already has of course uh, in an area not too far from the rover curiosity in an area called Elysium Planitia now he does a fantastic job this guy is right on his game uh, what I thought was cool was and I'm just gonna show you this was that it looks like this large block with a corner right here so we have two sides one in the shade one in the Sun but check this out right here it has this curvature and it's quite thick see it right there now some of this stuff may just be geological right just simple rocks blocks I mean nature can do that right and just watch the video he is it an ancient city that they're looking at because just like here on earth right we have temples and pyramids that have been what thousands of years old I mean it goes back to 7 to 15 to 40,000 years old some of these ancient civilizations we have here on earth and then you look at the, the newest technology we get out whether it's structures uh, crafts the ways we the way we get around so on and so forth so it could very well be a, a part of Mars that is just ancient and it shows blocks building blocks so on and so forth Anyway, check his channel out. Check out some of his work. I think you guys will like it. I'll even give you the link to this particular video. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to make too much longer. I didn't want to make it super long for you guys, but I did want to show you this. This is cool. Uh, again, I'll leave all the links as usual. You know how uh, you know how that's how I roll on this channel. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Always appreciated, and I'll see you on the flip side.